So yeah, I'm going to talk about Next.js and what's upcoming, like uh, Guillermo said. Um, so I made a very small presentation just to take you through what is Next.js, because I don't know if everyone heard of it, so uh, I already met people that didn't, so we'll just walk through it real quick. Um, yeah, so about me, I'm Tim Newtkens. Uh, it's not pronounceable in English, uh, my last name. But anyway, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I tweet a lot about Next.js, Webpack, um, yeah, basically anything related to Next. What is Next? Next is a lightweight framework for static and server-rendered applications. It allows you to create applications that are server-rendered and also client-rendered. Uh, what we do is we do automatic code splitting. Uh, every React component inside of your pages becomes a route inside or a route uh, that exports a React component that is rendered. Um, during server-side rendering, but also it allows you to do client rendering using Next Link, which allows you to, um, if you click the link, it will do a client-side transition instead of a server-side transition. So React apps feel very fast if you use Next.js. For example, if you go to Zite.co, it's a website built using Next.js. Um, yeah, so this is our blog. If you click to any uh, page like this, uh, it all feels very fast. This is because Next.js also has a, a property called prefetch, which allows you to automatically prefetch any data that is needed to render the page that is upcoming. So for example, if you hover this, you could prefetch on demand uh, what is needed for the domains page before the user clicks it. So it allows for easy data fetching. Uh, we have a, a method, a static method that you can export on a, a top level React component that are inside the pages directory, which uh, is called get initial props. And that returns a JSON object that is then passed into your React component on the server side and on the client side if needed. Uh, we implement Webpack and Babel for you. So you don't have to touch any configuration uh, by default. So it's zero configuration, which is the buzzword right now for it. But it allows you to just focus on building React applications instead of doing some Webpack config that takes you ages to build. Uh, that is e not even optimized at that point. Um, we also do, we have Babel built in, so you don't have to implement any transformations. We track the browser features that are actively being supported, so there's no extra uh, browser features that are not going to be supported immediately. Um, and it allows you to do micro front end, or how other people call them, zones or islands which allows you to build Next.js applications next to each other on, a, on one domain. Uh, one example of this is uh, Trulia. Trulia is a housing website and they are basically using Next.js as in the zones configuration to gradually migrate away their PHP monolith to Next.js using GraphQL. So this is a simple React uh, component, but it's also immediately a page inside of Next.js. Uh, so for Next 7, um, I've been working the last few weeks on upgrading Webpack to Webpack 4, which is going to allow for a whole, re a whole new category of optimizations and uh, faster build times, uh, new features, uh, one of those is uh, WebAssembly support, for example. Um, we're also implementing Bebel 7, which is currently already in, um, in Next 6, but not the RC version. So there's a few breaking changes that are going to affect everyone, but in the end, it will all be better. Um, we also implemented React Loadable, which is currently the state-of-the-art library to do uh, dynamic code splitting using uh, dynamic imports. So you can import uh, any component on demand uh, just when it starts render when you want to render it. Not, um, so basically what it does, is it preloads 
the component when you want to render it instead of uh, having every all the code in one bundle. Uh, also, I've been working on implementing React Arrow Overlay, which if you used Create React App before, is basically a way to, uh, every time uh, you throw an error or you may basically make a mistake, it shows you exactly where the mistake was made and how, well not how you can solve it, because you still have to do it yourself, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe in the future not, but, um, but it will show you exactly where it happened because uh, it's been a really long goal for us to implement better error reporting when in development. Because usually you spend a lot of time debugging issues that are uh, throwing something somewhere or you make a typo and you don't know where to, where that you actually made the typo. So this really helps uh, with uh, developer experience, basically. And also we're working on serverless Next.js, which is also a buzzword, but um, what it means is we're going to optimize the Next.js server to be very fast at boot up, which really pairs really well with uh, our upcoming announcement of Cloud V2, which Brene talked about. So now we're going to the fun part. Um, I made a few demos that are actually uh, parameterized routing, web assembly, uh, wait, uh, <laughs> web assembly, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Actually, wait. So I made a few demos. Um, it's also good to note that um, I am using uh, MDX deck, which is kind of fun because I actually, uh, together with John, made MDX. And now there's a slight uh, framework for it, so I'm literally writing um, my own slides using something I built that someone else actually extended, uh, which is Brent, which is, uh, he's sitting here and he's doing a great job. <laughs> so let's see. Let's start with next Rust. So. So I've been uh, experimenting with uh, Next.js plus WebAssembly, which means uh, WebAssembly allows you to compile basically almost any language that supports C or that, or that is built on top of C into a file that, is uh, that can run in the browser and on the server. So one of those examples is Rust. Rust is a programming language which compiles to uh, C code, I believe, but you can also compile it to WASM like this. Uh, which is the short name for WebAssembly. So this is a demo of uh, a simple counter. Uh, you can increase the count, obviously. It's using the Next.js link, so you can see here that the number is updated when you click the button. Uh, but when you look at the code, and I made a small example here, it's actually using uh, next slash dynamic, which is uh, now powered by React Loadable, to import a Rust module right over here. And the Rust module is a WASM file, which then is turned into a React component, which returns the number, uh, which is add one. Uh, and add one is actually a Rust function. So it's a Rust function compiled into Wasm that is then imported into a React app and rendered as a React component. And that's basically the Wasm demo that I prepared for you. <laughs> but and to extend this, uh, there's actually more funny things to do with this because uh, doing at one in Rust is obviously not what you're going to do in production. Um, another not so production uh, advice, but you can do it. Uh, someone actually compiled the whole PHP compiler into Wasm. So you can actually, um, I tried to do it, but it didn't exactly work. <laughs> <laughs> um, with Webpack that is, because it works. Um, I can actually show you, that's probably better demo, but uh, it's called PIB, 
and this PHP in browser. And as you can see, this is like plain PHP, PHP info. Uh, it takes a while to load for some reason. <laughs> uh, well, this is not even, this is loading uh, the WASM file because what it does is it downloads 6.5 MB, which is PHP. So it just downloaded PHP. Now if you click run, it shows a PHP info, but here's the catch. This is rendered inside of your browser. So this is not like coming from a server or something. This is inside of your browser. So if you want, you can all switch back to PHP applications. <laughs> <laughs> And you can even combine it with uh, React or Next or anything. Yeah, so that was the Rust example. Um, yeah, so I had another example, which is parameter Rust. So something I've been experimenting with together with Guillermo is um, implementing a renderer for uh, a different pages directory, which looks like this. You have uh, params inside of your page names. So what it allows you to do is, it allows you to do abc uh, id.js, and it ends up being um, slash, uh, if you go to, let's see, if you go to abc or, let's see, uh, blog slash, um, tag slash hello world .js, for example. This will be served as um, ABC is blog, DF is tag, and then ID is uh, hello world, which will automatically uh, serve those parameters here inside of params of get initial props. Now, the reason that I'm uh, typing it out for you is that uh, I actually prepared something else, one more thing, which you just saw, if you were a <laughs> <laughs> <very> quick look. <laughs> um, so, sorry about that, but uh, one more thing is suspense. So, the reason I can't show you parameterized routes is that I'm, uh, I have built a custom uh, build of Next.js plus React uh, compiled because uh, suspense is not out yet, of course. Um, let's see. So let's get into this. Suspense. So suspense is actually uh, just a React app, uh, an XJS app, actually. So, oh wait, is that okay? Yeah, okay. So this is just a React app, just an XJS app, uh, but it's using the new Suspense uh, API. So what it allows you to do is, it allows you to create resources that are uh, asynchronously fetched. That means that you can do, for example, data fetching or component fetching like uh, with next slash dynamic uh, but in a more efficient and easier to understand way. So in this example, we're importing, uh, we're first sleeping for one second, and then we're importing uh, components slash thing. Then the module is, uh, comes back and module.default is used because that's how Babel transpiles it. Um, and after that, you get this, get thing.read where you pass in a custom cache and the properties from the component. The component itself, uh, comp at that point, is the result of this function. Um, at that point, you can actually render it just like any other React component. But here's the catch. If you did that with current React, what would happen is it would show promise, promise or something. Uh, just the output of promise to string. With uh, suspense, this allows you to go to the website, like localhost 3000. It's very slow because it feels slow because the one second uh, sleep. But what happened is, uh, thing there. 
So it was server-side rendered. So uh, React first awaited for it, and then rendered the rest of the page. So this will allow for some pretty interesting uh, things. For example, uh, what if you want to do data fetching? Currently we have uh, get initial props in Next, which allows you to do data fetching, but only on the pages, pages inside of the pages directory, top level component. But with this, you can actually do get initial props in any component, because uh, at that point you can just return a promise and it will be awaited and then uh, render the rest of the page. So I made a little demo about of that too, which is here, which is the about page. So as you can see here, uh, there's an about page. I'll zoom in a bit. And the about page, uh, the home page has a link to the about page. So if I click there, what will happen is it loads. Well, first of all, what you could see is if I go back um, and then the, uh, to the about page, you'll see that about is immediately switched to home, but the data is not there yet. So what React does is it just renders the component, but not the uh, component, the parts that need uh, to be awaited uh, that return a promise. So at that point, I'm actually rendering uh, the JSON placeholder type code API. Uh, with also a one second sleep because otherwise type code is very fast and you won't see uh, if I remove this and it will be hot reloaded You can see that it's it's too fast see <laughs> So if we do this and then go back you'll see that it takes longer to load So at this point we're actually just fetching data, but inside of a React component, that is not even part of the main app component, but down the tree here in about component. So this is very exciting for us because it will allow you to do data fetching or component fetching or code splitting on demand whenever you want and need it, instead of needing to provide all the props down from the get initial props result. Um, and that was my presentation, basically.